Welcome. The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce you to more of the basic concepts involved with using the Design Builder drawing tools. During the tutorial we will introduce you to adding a rectangular block, using increment snaps, selecting and deleting objects, the move and clone tools and finally checking measurements and areas. Further information on the topics covered in this tutorial is available in the comprehensive Design Builder help file. We'll start by adding a rectangular block. The simplest way to do this is to select the Add Block function, then select the rectangular perimeter shape. I'll also change the wall thickness to 0.3 metres before moving the cursor back towards the centre of the edit screen and left clicking to define the start point of the block. You can then draw the block in two ways either manually move the cursor the required x and y distances or type in the x and y dimensions in metres with a space between the two. For this block I will type in 20 space 30 Note that the type text is displayed in, in the key inbox in drawing options here and typing in positive numbers will result in a positive displacement along the relevant axis. Then press enter to create a block with external dimensions 20 meters along its x axis and 30 meters along its y axis. The crosshair cursor here indicates that the add block function is still enabled ready to draw the next block. I'll now draw a rectangular block using the second method i.e. by manually locating the cursor at the required endpoint to complete the block. Note that the drawing options used for the previous block remain as the default settings for the next block. I'll just pan block 1 up the screen a little and then left click to start the new 20 by 30 meter block. As you can see it can be difficult to select an exact point manually so consider using increment snaps. Increment snaps can be set to whole units or fractions such as 0.1 meters. In this case I'll set the increment to 1 meter. Now see how easily the cursor moves to the 20 by 30 meter point and left click to confirm the block. I'll now cancel the add block function. If a mistake was made during modeling the building, block or other object can be easily deleted after making the appropriate selection. Selecting an object such as a building, block, surface or opening in Design Builder will result in relevant functions being enabled in the toolbar and options menus. For example, see the toolbar change as I select a window with a single click, enabling the move, clone and delete commands. Selecting the whole block or building will additionally enable the drag face cut block, rotate and stretch commands which are relevant at building and block level. Cancel the selection using the escape key on your keyboard. To delete block 1 only place the cursor on the block and left click once to select the block so it turns pink then press the delete key on your keyboard. Most actions can be reversed using the undo option in the edit menu. If you wish to select multiple objects simply hold down the control key and click once on each object so that they are all highlighted before selecting your desired function. You can move, clone, rotate or delete multiple blocks simultaneously like this. To delete both blocks together I select them whilst depressing the control key. 
Then press delete or use one of the delete options in the toolbar or edit menu which can also be accessed with the right mouse button. Undo the delete command. We can also select items using the standard Windows click, hold and drag technique. You must ensure that the whole of the object is highlighted for it to be selected. Place the cursor outside the perimeter of the object you wish to delete. Left click and hold down the mouse button and then drag the mouse until the objects are completely covered. Release the mouse and the selected objects will turn pink. Press the escape key on your keyboard to cancel the selection. The move function allows us to reposition whole objects such as blocks and windows. Multiple objects can be moved simultaneously as discussed earlier. We can use the increment snaps and the dash displacement line to help locate the object a set distance along the horizontal plane. First select the object to be moved so it turns pink and then select the move command. Choose the most appropriate handle point on the object such as a base corner end snap point and left click once. I can then easily move block 2 in any direction a set distance. I'll now move it 10 meters along the x-axis using the increment snaps and the displacement line. See how it snaps to the axes when parallel. Locate the object with a final left click. To move block 2 above block 1 to create a first floor I only need to select a handle point as the block and move command have remained selected. I'll choose the same end snap at the base of block 2 as my handle point in this case to enable the bottom corner to be located onto the corresponding top corner of block 1. Finalise the move with the aid of the end snap point to define the lo new location with a left click. Then cancel the move command. The clone function enables us to copy an object using a process similar to that of moving an object. All settings and data used in the original object are retained in the copy. If you're building as multiple objects, say building floors with similar data, you should consider cloning the floor once that data has been entered for the base object to minimize the amount of data entry required. I'll now copy the first floor and move the copy to the bottom of the ground floor to create a basement. In this situation I'll select a snap point at the top of the block as the handle point and use the end snap points to locate this at the corresponding corner at the bottom of the ground floor block. Select block 2, select the clone tool, left click to select the handle point, move the cursor to the destination point for the cloned item and left click to confirm the copy. Then cancel the clone command and press escape to cancel the highlighting. Note that there are now no windows in the cloned object. It's below ground level and design builders recognize this, automatically adjusting the adjacent condition to underground. We can check dimensions such as wall heights or lengths using the measure tool. Simply select the measure tool, then define the start and end points with one click of the left mouse button. Using the endpoint snaps, I can confirm that the length of the west wall is 30 meters. The resulting value is displayed in drawing options here. Internal measurements can also be checked. I'll go to block level and check that the internal dimension of block 2 is 19.4 meters along the x-axis i.e. the external dimension minus the sum of the wall thicknesses. Select measure, 
then left click to define the start and end points checking the value in drawing options the floor areas of individual zones and surface areas can be found at surface level in the navigation panel we can see that the north wall easily identified as the wall at zero degrees here has a total surface area of 67.9 meters squared expanding to surface level in the navigation panel shows us that this comprises 47.53 meters squared of wall construction and three windows at 6.79 meters squared each you may sometimes find it easier to use plan view to measure internally areas can also be measured if required by changing the measured quantity in drawing options to area and then tracing round the perimeter of the area to be measured like so the measured area is again displayed in the value box further information on these topics is available in the comprehensive design builder help file and other tutorials